It appears the Republicans do have a golden opportunity in 22 and 24, based solely on President Biden's current approval rating, 38 percent, according to Quinnipiac University, and also the ongoing issues we're seeing with the supply chain and the economy. Yet the former president is urging his supporters not to vote over an old, unproven gripe. So is it time for Republicans to move on or move forward, as Andrew Yang might suggest? Yes, pun intended. Democrats, meantime, need to stop attacking each other from within. But will either of them listen or change? Or is Andrew Yang the man with the solution? That's where we begin tonight. With Andrew Yang himself, also author of the book called Forward. Andrew, it's great to have you with us. We appreciate the time. I'm sure you've heard this from uh, others when we talk about people leaving a party. I'm not leaving the party. The party left me. Where are you on that? Polarization is getting worse and worse, Joe. We can all feel it. And unfortunately, the, our incentives are driving people into corners and nothing is getting done. And most Americans can see it's not working. We're sick of it. You're just, you just showed a graphic showing that independents outnumber Democrats or Republicans. So the forward party is going to provide this positive unifying movement in the middle that will draw in a ton of energy, but also will try and fix the incentives that are tearing us apart, whether that's our political incentives that reward people on the extremes, our media incentives that separate us into, into ideological camps, or social media that rewards inflammatory and divisive language much more than a voice of reason. So, if we change the incentives, then we'll have a chance. So it was the polarization, Andrew, that drove you out? It wasn't anything in particular that led you to say, look, I'm done. I've had enough of this party. I learned a lot running for president, Joe. And what I concluded is that the system's not designed to work for the American people. And so if you find that and believe that, and you're a patriot and you want to do something to help, then you can't just keep pushing in this system that you know is broken. We have to fix the system itself, and that change cannot happen from within one of the major parties, which is why I've started the forward party. This country wants to move not left or right, but forward, and there's a real path for us if we shift to open primaries and rank choice voting so that right. third parties emerge. Which you've seen. I wanted to ask you about that because you wrote, in many respects, running for president requires qualities that would make you a terrible leader. What do you mean by that? I've run organizations, Joe, and the more someone is chasing press, the worse their organizations tend to function. But in politics, and certainly running for president, the opposite is true, where your job is actually to chase uh, movie, TV cameras, no offense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or, or to, to, to be doing press and interviews as opposed to trying to get things working better on the ground. Uh, it also does kind of mess with your head because people hang on your, your words. You're surrounded by staff that theoretically work for you, but they actually uh, are telling you to do this and do that at all times. You end up giving rise to like a, a cottage industry hmm. in the political industrial complex. You mentioned the media and you were recently on CNN. Here's Jim Acosta pressing you on why you went on Tucker Carlson's show on Fox. just a bad person and he represents so much of what is wrong on in television news these days you know this all too well he, he you know spouts off white nationalist talking points and so why why would you even go on his show this andrew i think is actually what you're trying to prevent right i mean this is what you're going after part of it anyway the echo chamber in both politics and in tv you know, to insinuate maybe that you shouldn't go on another network. That's actually maybe arguably where you should be, right? To try to make your points with people who may not believe you. I met thousands of Americans out on the trail of every political alignment in small towns and big cities. And if you get Americans one-on-one, -one, one face-to-face, we actually agree on a lot. People are very reasonable. People are actually very warm, kind, and generous. Um, but in the media, we're getting separated again into these tribes or camps. Uh, and it's not where America wants to go, really. Like, if we are truly divided in that way, we're never going to be able to come together and make meaningful progress. All right, so I'm curious, why start a third party then, Andrew? Because I don't need to tell you the history. And a lot of the reviews that I've seen on what you're trying to do here, one called it pure self-abuse. Uh, others called it a fake party. Others said the philosophy was nothing more than talking points and buzzwords. Another called it directionless. Um, I mean, I would summarize what I saw as, as laudable but laughable. What do you make of this criticism? A lot of it's coming from the left. 
If you look at the numbers, not only do independents outnumber Democrats or Republicans, but a record high 62% of Americans want a third party or an alternative. We can all see that the duopoly is not working. So the question is, what changes? If a majority of us want there to be a genuine alternative and a more dynamic political system, then we have the power to make that happen. Now, there are going to be a lot of entrenched interests that want nothing to change, even though we can see that it is not delivering for us and our families. People are getting more and more inflamed. This country is heading towards political violence. That's real. And the only way out is for us to have a genuinely multipolar system where it's not just two sides clashing and clashing right. and getting nothing done and dividing us and pitting us against each other. I certainly get that, Andrew, but no one's been able to harness this, this independent fatigue, if you will, that you mentioned. I mean, you can talk about Ross Perot certainly made a respectable run in 1992, and you could argue that it, it cost Bush 41 a second term. And we all remember Ralph Nader in 2000, and we have a look at some of the results from Florida in that race, which I think you could certainly argue cost Al Gore the presidency in 2000. The best, my point, I guess, Andrew, that you could hope for really, at least if you look at recent history, is being a spoiler. Well, Joe, you're fast forwarding to 2024, and my focus, and I believe our attention should be on 2022, which is we can have successful ballot initiatives in states around the country that shift to open primaries, change the incentives of our leaders. We can elevate candidates who are for lowercase d democratic reforms. That's that's where we should be paying attention. Everyone just fast forwards to the presidential, and I get it because I ran for president. <laughs> but there's a lot of work to do in the here and now, uh, and I'm going to roll out my sleeves and help candidates who are aligned with the Ford Party's vision on the Democratic side, the Republican side, running as independents. And a lot of people are excited about it because, like you said, it's most of us. Well, it is, but I think what the other concern here is that when you have a situation like this where you're playing spoiler, again, I understand your point on that, but the other thing is, is that there are folks in your own party who would rather you not do this. So why not possibly summon a new group within the party like Bernie Sanders has done maybe, or even the squad? You can argue that maybe they wouldn't be able to, I guess, form their own party, but they've certainly been an effective force within the party. That wouldn't really help with the polarization that we're seeing get worse and worse. And it also would be impossible to enact open primaries and ranked choice voting in blue states and red states and purple states if you were coming at it as someone who is a member of one of the major parties because then the other side would regard it as somehow helping the other side. Even though in this case, what it's really doing is it's going to help the American people have leaders that actually are looking out for us as opposed to the hyper-partisans on either side. Well, on yeah, on both sides, true. And we've seen, as we mentioned, Kirsten Sinema and other lawmakers getting chased through restaurants and through airports uh, into bathrooms. Is this part of what you want to get rid of? And I guess, is this something you can change with this third party or hope to? Right now, a lot of energy ends up flowing to the extremes, Joe, because that's where social media drives people. That's where media organizations drive people. But it's also where political incentives drive people, where if I'm uh, raising an alarm about a particular issue and being very sensationalist, I'm more likely to get money and attention and to some extent uh, political prominence. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is shift to a system that will actually reward the folks in the reasonable middle and disempower the extremes that right now, unfortunately, our system rewards. Are you gonna run for anything else, Andrew? My focus is on trying to help reasonable people get into office and fixing the system that's literally driving us insane, pitting us against each other. It's going to result in unrest and worse, and we all know that. So what are we waiting for? Let's actually fix it. If you wanna fix it with me, Let's get in there, change the incentives, switch that dial, and reward the reasonable among us. Andrew Yang, former Democrat and now Forward Party founder. We'll stay in touch and see how it goes. Good luck to you, sir. Thanks again for the time. Thank you, Joe.